hello and welcome back to another new video of ktor in this video we are going to write our first http api using our ktor server this video is a part of ktor server series so if you haven't watched our previous video where we talked about what is ktor its applications why use ktor at all and we also set up our first ktor server project wherein we understood the project structure of a ktor server application i would highly recommend you to check that video out first and then come back to this video also if you like this video do give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the meet kotlin youtube channel and if you want to contribute to the meet kotlin community do write us a mail on the id mentioned in the description of this video which is below the like button before we begin allow me to introduce myself my name is rahul ahuja and i work as a senior android app developer you can get in touch with me on linkedin and twitter with the qr codes shown on the screen so as you know from the previous video to start with a ktor project on a web based client we will head over to start.ktor.io this website and we get this view in place so we will rename our sample ktor project to ktor http api in the project settings we would uh, come on to the build system we will keep this as is our artifact name is generated the ktor version i would select the latest engine as netty engine and configuration as the hocon file as explained in the previous video and we'll also like to add the sample code so we will keep this box checked now we will head over to the add plugins section we would add some features into our project so coming to routing so routing is basically a core ktor feature which is responsible for handling all the request that will be coming into our ktor application server so we will add this routing also we will head over to serialization which would help us in serializing and deserializing the json which is received or it is to be sent from the server to the client so we will add this as well you can also choose to add json and jackson for the same purpose but uh, for the sake of this video i will be adding the serialization apart from this we would add content so we will head over to this yeah content negotiation this is added if it is not added for you uh, you can add it what content negotiation does is it primarily plays two roles which would be first to help in serialization and deserialization second it would handle the negotiation of the content between the server and the client we will go ahead and generate the project so our project is generated and we get downloaded a zip file now it's time to open this project into our intellij idea okay so i have this uh, project opened in my intellij idea we will head over to build.gradle file wherein we would first check the dependencies of the plugins that we added on the web client so in here we have a dependency for the content negotiation and we also have our dependency for ktor serialization ktx in place we have a dependency which is added by default for a log back which would help us in formatting the logs for the server we also have uh, our ktor core dependency which would give us the core features of the ktor then we have the netty engine dependency for the engine that we selected during the creation of the project we have uh, test uh, dependencies which would be used if we write the unit test cases of the project so now that we have all the dependencies in place we would head over to our application wherein we see two methods being called inside the application module we have this method configure serialization which is nothing but an extension function to the application class we have this code snippet which says install con content negotiation plugin and it says json so content negotiation is responsible to negotiate the content between the client and the server um, apart from that it is also used for uh, serialization and deserialization purpose it examines the accept header and see if it 
if our cat or server can serve a request that is received onto the server in here we have a routing code block which is by default provided by the code generator we have a get request here which would be listening to this particular url and it would respond in a format of map which is nothing but a key value pair apart from that we have these two plugins included of routing because we included routing as our plugin and we have serialization this is because of the serialization plugin uh, that we added during our project setup both these methods of routing and serialization would be added inside our application now we would go ahead and create our first http api on the kato server so for this what i've done is i've created a routes package inside which i have customer routes kt file also to hold the data i have created a models package inside which i have a data class which is the customer data class in the customer data class i have id which is a type string i have first name which is again of type string i have last name of type string and lastly i have email of type string we do write a serializable annotation over this class which will help us in serialization of the customer object then to hold the data we have a in memory db customer data store which is nothing but a list of customer we head over to customer routes in here we create a customer routing method which is nothing but a extension function to our route class inside that method we would like to listen to all the endpoints which start from slash customer now we want to respond to different http methods like get which would return all the customers in the database we would like to fulfill a request for a particular customer given an id we would like to save a customer which would accept the json data from the client and save it onto the server then we would also like to have a method which would accept a customer id and delete that particular customer from our database so we'll go ahead and see how each of this method works firstly we have our get method now this will respond with a list of all the customers that are there in our local database or in memory db it would respond to all the slash customer endpoints so in the get http method firstly we check if our customer data store is not empty customer data store is nothing but our in memory data store that we have so we'll check if it is not empty and if it is not empty we will simply say call dot respond with customer data store now how is this serialization taking place or how our kato server would be returning a json format to the client this is completely handled by the serialization that we wrote in here which would install the content negotiation plugin and help us communicate between the client and the server in the json format so everything is taken care by the ktor then if our customer data store is null what we want to respond to the client is a simple text which would say no customer data found and please try again and we would return a http status of okay we can also create another response object here which would contain a text message and http status code and similar to responding with a data we can respond with that particular object then we head over to another get method which would respond to all the slash customer slash id request which is thrown at the ktor server so in here as you can see we are accepting a parameter from the url which is of the name id we will first fetch the id parameter from our url and it is done by the keyword call dot parameters and giving the name of the parameter and if the id is not provided we would again respond to the client with an error message saying missing id and give a status code of a bad request all the status codes of the http are mentioned in a class called http status code this is provided by the ktor now if the id is provided 
in our request then we will head over to our customer data store and find a customer with that particular id once that customer is found then we would respond in a similar fashion like we did in our previous method using the call keyword call dot respond and pass it the customer object if the customer is not found with the given id then we would respond with an error message to the client and and give the client an http status code of not found saying the data is not found on the server now heading over to the post request to the server this would help us receive an object of the type customer from a post request in here as you can see we have to receive a customer object from the client we would use the call keyword again and now we have to receive the object so we will say receive and give it a type of customer then it would convert the incoming json data into the type customer and all we have to do is add it into our local database which is nothing but customer data store also we have to give some response to the client so in this case we are sending a response to the client with a text saying customer data successfully stored and we would uh, and we would respond with a http status code of created next we head over to delete function which would accept an id parameter this id is nothing but a customer id that the client wishes to delete or remove from the database in here again we will check if the client has provided the id if the client has not provided the id we would respond with a text saying a missing id and send a http status code of bad request however if the id is received from the client we would head over and remove any customer found with a given id now the remove if function would give us a boolean value which we can use to respond to the client so in case if the customer id is found and the customer is removed uh, successfully we would respond to the client with a text saying customer record deleted and http status code of accepted similarly in case of false we would respond to the client with an error message saying no customer was found with a given id and an http code of not found this is it for the code part of this video we will head over to our postman application and try to test these routes which we have written for our customer okay so to run and test our application what we just wrote we'll head over to this run button and click it our application would start building and as you can see in the run window down here we have uh, our application which is responding at this url uh, we'll head over to our postman application we have the same url here we have our get request setup now what this url would do actually is this would be intercepted by the uh, the routing mechanism that we have written over here and return us a hello world response in format of text so we'll uh, try and send this request and we get a hello world response from the server as you can see so our server is up and running now what we will try is we'll try to fetch all the customers and this would be intercepted by the route that we have written in this get http method in here we'll try and fetch okay so as you can see no customer found please try again because we do not have anything in the database at present so we'll head over to our post request and uh, give it uh, the body in format of a raw json in here i would mention the id of the customer the customer name last name and email address in form of json we would send this request and as we can see we have successfully inserted the customer into our data store so again we'll head over to the get request which would fetch all our customers and try to run this api and as you can see we get a response from the server which is nothing but a list of uh, customer objects 
so we have inserted one object currently we'll try to insert another one so let's say jack and jill we would say jack at the red gmail.com and put an id as 101 so we'll send this request and in the fetch all customers api we would have two customers return from the server okay now if you want a particular customer we can provide an id to our get or server so let us say we have uh, provided 101 and we say send so we get one particular customer object in response which is of id 101 we'll try to uh, not provide any id in the request url and see what happens if our error scenario works so in this case we do get an error from the server saying the missing id please provide customer id in the request okay so yes our apis are working successfully and uh, we can head over to delete the customer record so now in delete customer record we'll select delete in the url we would provide an id of the customer that we want to delete so i would say uh, delete the customer with id 101 so as you can see the customer record uh, has been deleted successfully in the server we'll head over back to our fetch all the customers api and we will try to fetch all the customers okay so as you can see we now only have one customer object in our database we would also try another variation of this delete which says we remove the id and try to delete the customer and we are given an error from the server which says error missing id please provide an id in the request so as you can see we get a bad status request in here this is the http status that was provided by us okay so that is it for today's video we saw how to develop our first http api using our ktor server we saw a default get request we saw a get request with a parameter we saw a post request and we saw a delete request by which we are deleting something uh, on the server so that is it for today's video i hope you like this video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the meet kotlin youtube channel see you in the next one peace